In this lecture, we'll talk about vector spaces. So we're going to start by reminding ourselves about some of the facts about Rn that we've talked about. So remember that Rn is the set of all vectors that have n entries. So things that look like a1, a2, all the way up through a n, where the a's are real numbers. And each of those elements is called a vector, and we've got two operations on Rn. And what it means for an operation to be on Rn is that these are ways that we can combine or manipulate elements of that set. So the two operations are vector addition, which just means that we can take two of these vectors and add them together, and what we get is another vector in that same set. And we can also multiply by a real number. If we have a vector in that set and we have a real scalar, c, then we can multiply c times v and we get another element again in that set rn. In addition, those operations have several nice properties that we've talked about. So we see a couple of things we've already talked about repeated. So u plus v is an element of rn, and c times u is an element of rn. We call those closure properties. And all that means is that if we take two elements of rn, two vectors in rn, and we add them together, what we get is another element of rn. We don't get some other exotic thing that lives in some other set. And again, that might seem like an obvious statement, but we'll see a little bit later how the closure idea is an important one. So these 10 facts about Rn are what we call the axioms, or sometimes we'll call them the vector space axioms. So the idea here is that we want to generalize this idea of Rn. So we want to take the important properties of Rn that we've just talked about and look for other scenarios, other settings, in which those same facts are true. So the definition here is that a vector space, or sometimes called a real vector space, is just a non-empty set of objects, which we call vectors, on which we have two operations, addition and multiplication by scalars. And where all of those 10 axioms that we just talked about are true, except they're true for this mysterious set V, rather than for the slightly less mysterious set Rn. So the axioms look like this. And what I want you to notice is that we really haven't changed anything, except everywhere that we had written Rn, we've now written capital V. So capital V is just this set of vectors, but everything else about this is the same. The commutativity of addition, for example, looks exactly the same as it looks for the vector space Rn. The distributivity of scalar multiplication over vector addition looks exactly the same as it looked for our axioms for Rn. So when we think about examples of vector spaces, certainly Rn, the thing that we've been talking about for a while in this course, is the canonical example of a vector space. And the idea of studying other vector spaces is to investigate which properties of vector spaces carry over from Rn to these other spaces. Another way to think about it is, if all we knew about a space was that it satisfied those 10 axioms, what else would we be able to figure out about that space? What other similarities would that space have with the original vector space Rn? So there are several different kinds of examples of vector spaces. One example here is what we call doubly infinite sequences. So it's a sequence that goes forever in both directions. Now you may have studied infinite sequences in a calculus class, so this is similar except the sequence goes on forever in both directions. Now we can add two of these sequences by simply adding their components. So if we have another sequence z sub k, well then its entries are z0, z1, z2, z negative 1, z negative 2, and so on. And if we wanted to add those together, we would just add the corresponding entries. And if we wanted to multiply one of these doubly infinite sequences by a scalar, all we would do is multiply every entry by the scalar. And one of the axioms that we talked about was that we had to have a zero vector, an additive identity. And in this case, the zero vector is the doubly infinite sequence where every entry is a zero. So zero is forever in both directions. Now, for us to truly convince ourselves that this is a vector space, we would actually have to go through each of those axioms and make sure that each of those 10 axioms are true. Sometimes we'll actually go through that in detail, but in this case, we're just sort of surveying some examples. But it does turn out that this space of doubly infinite sequences does in fact satisfy all of those axioms. Another example of a vector space is when we have a fixed integer n, the space of all polynomials of degree at most n. So for example, if we had n equaling 3, then this would be the set of all polynomials that have the form 
a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared plus a3t cubed, where a0, a1, a2, and a3 are just real coefficients of that polynomial. Now we have to explain what the two operations are, addition and scalar multiplication, and one of the things that we typically point out when we look at these examples is what's the zero vector. So how do we add two polynomials? Well, we just add them like we normally do in algebra. How do we multiply a polynomial by a scalar? Again, we just do the normal thing that we would do in algebra. And then the zero vector here would just be the zero polynomial, which we might call z of t, and that's just equal to zero. Now, in this vector space, we, in addition, might think, well, we could also multiply two of these polynomials. But that actually wouldn't be an operation on this space. Let's look back again at the example where n equals 3. If I take two polynomials of degree 3 and multiply them together, I'm going to get a polynomial of degree 6, and that's not going to be an element of that set. And so in that case, multiplication of one vector by another vector would not be closed. If we multiplied those two vectors, we would not get back into the same set that we talked about. So these are the kinds of issues that are going to come up when we start investigating these other vector spaces. There are other operations we might look at. We might look at how those interact with the operations that we already have. We might ask questions about closure. These are the kinds of things that we're going to start investigating. One more example before we close. We've got a set of all functions from real numbers to real numbers. And again, we have to talk about how do we define the two operations, vector addition and scalar multiplication, and then what's the zero vector. Well, if we add two functions together, we just get another function. So if I had f of x and g of x, f plus g of x is simply f of x plus g of x. And if I had a scalar multiple, then cf of x is just what we would get by plugging in the function and then multiplying by the scalar. And then the zero vector, the zero function here, would be the the function that we get zero no matter what we plug in. Because if we add that function to any other function, then nothing happens. We just get the original function back. So these are the kinds of things that we're going to be talking about when we talk about vector spaces. We want to keep these examples in mind as we talk about a generic vector space, capital V. All we're going to know about capital V is that it satisfies those 10 axioms. We're not going to know which particular example that we're talking about. And the advantage of this approach is that whenever we prove a theorem about vector space, if we can prove something is true for all the vector spaces, or even all vector spaces with a particular property, then that theorem will be true no matter what example we're talking about. And in fact, it will apply to any examples that we haven't even thought about yet.